it's natural to want to know the ethnicity of our ancestors. And lots of people take DNA tests eager to learn the results and then end up disappointed and confused. Now I run a small genealogy workshop here in Orlando and one evening we were discussing ethnicity results from Ancestry. A class member said she was disappointed that her results were incorrect. She said her family was 50% Italian and unfortunately to her anyway, she had mostly Spanish ethnicity according to DNA results from Ancestry. And this is a significant point of discussion on lots of social media sites. Which teams are we supporting? What's my ethnicity? In this video, I'll explore DNA, ethnicity, ancestry and heritage. I'll explain your ethnicity results in simple terms and then give you 10 things to consider when looking at your ethnicity. First, how is ethnicity calculated? Most DNA companies calculate ethnicity in a similar way, so let's look at how Ancestry does it. After you submit your DNA to Ancestry, they divide it into about a thousand different sections for ethnicity mapping. At the same time, Ancestry groups together DNA from people with long regional histories. Currently they have about 84 global regions and they have about 1700 communities. Together these are their reference panels. Each of your thousand DNA sections are then compared to the reference panels. Your DNA sections are identified with the reference panel region to the most closely resemble. So if a section most closely resembles Ireland, for instance, then you'll be aligned with Ireland. If another one aligned with Spain, then that section will be aligned with Spain. Eventually all the matches are collated and the percentages of matches are calculated. This will make up your Ancestry ethnicity estimate. Here is mine. It all seems very straightforward. So why are people confused by their results? One reason is that DNA ethnicity does not always meet the common definition of ethnicity, which is a large group of people with a shared culture, a shared language, history and a set of traditions. In many cases, we are not sharing cultural traditions or languages with the regions that our DNA is pointing to. Rather, this is your DNA heritage. The term ethnicity can be confusing. Your DNA heritage and your ancestral heritage are not always the same. So let's take a quick look back at my DNA results. I have gone back to the 16th and 17th centuries on most of my ancestral lineage and I have a 100% English ancestral heritage. But according to my DNA, I'm only 57% English. Why am I not 100%? There are good reasons for this, which I'll discuss next. Most importantly, your DNA and your ancestral heritage, which is based on your research, cover different historical period. Typical most people Ancestral heritage does not go back much more than about 400 years. Some people go back further, and if it does, it will not be on every line. DNA heritage is most likely indicates your heritage and ethnicity between 400 and 1000 years ago. So your DNA heritage will predate your ancestral heritage. Let's look at my DNA heritage again. Any short history of England will include invasions by Vikings, Sweden and Denmark, and the Saxons from what it now is about Germany. This is the story of England, and this is the story told in my DNA. Always consider your DNA heritage as telling your story rather than a snapshot. Here is another example of DNA from someone who was born in Cuba. This DNA tells the story of Spain, invasions, empires, slavery, travel and conquest. Over the years, both Spain and Cuba have been at the centre of the movement of many different people, from invasions to slavery. As well as Spain invading Cuba, Cuba was earlier conquered by the Moors from North Africa. Again, this is the DNA telling the story of somebody who was born in Cuba. Your idea of your own ethnicity is probably focused on your parental lines. But DNA does not favour parental lines. In fact, the majority of your DNA could be from ancestors you're not even focused on. For instance, let's look at King Charles. 
We often follow the royal line when we think of his ancestors, but he is just as closely related to the Romanovs of Russia as he is to the English royal family. Now, most of your ethnicity is left behind with your ancestors. The amount of DNA passed down with, by your ancestors has with each generation. On average, you will get about six and a quarter percent from each of your great great grandparents. Unless you are an identical twin, siblings inherit DNA, different DNA from their parents. So their DNA ethnicity could be even different between siblings. And the one or two percent findings on your DNA results look great, but could it just be statistical noise? While these things certainly add interest, they're just as likely to disappear next time Ancestry recalculates ethnicity. Now DNA heritage or ethnicity is only as good as the reference panels. So let's take a deeper look at the ref regional reference panels. It's important to look at how Ancestry describes their regions when looking at your results. Now let's look at my Scottish DNA. When we take a closer look at the region, Scotland it includes a number of other countries, including England and Ireland. Also, when we look at the amount of Scottish DNA, although Ancestry is given an average number of 18%, it could be anywhere between 0 and 28%. If you actually wish to know a little bit more about the countries you're aligned to, there is a really good AI tool attached here to your results. Now let's go back and look at another region, Ireland. In this case, Ireland could even include parts of France. And the possible range is again 0 to 70%. So it's always worth going beyond the headline numbers when you're looking at your DNA results. Finally, it's likely your results will change over time, as Ancestry is continually updating their reference panels and algorithms. And because different companies use different algorithms and different panels, your ethnicity will be different between companies, even at the age perhaps. Now, your DNA, ethnicity, or again, heritage as I prefer to call it, will give you a wonderful depiction of your family's roots. But to be truly meaningful, you have to layer on the ancestral, social, and historical research to create your own story. I hope this video has helped you understand and appreciate DNA ethnicity results. It would be great if you took the time to like and share, and of course subscribe. Have a great day and watch out for new videos.